What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the long-awaited Adidas Yeezy Boost 700 V2 in the static colorway. This morning was an interesting morning because I was doing a live cop for this exact sneaker online and I had missed out on pretty much every release except for maybe like nice kicks or something like that. Which, by the way, if you haven't checked out my Twitch yet, make sure to check it out at twitch.tv slash Seth Fowler. I'd been streaming for about an hour. I'd missed out on all the releases of these guys online. I thought all hope was lost and I was going to have to pay resale. And then all of a sudden, Lapson and Hammer tweeted that they had pairs first come first serve. So apologies to everyone who was in that Twitch stream. Um, I turned off the stream, jumped right in Uber and somehow got to Lapstone and Hammer before they sold out of my size. So huge shout out to Lapstone and Hammer for just doing first come first serve, that was awesome. And because of that, I have this beautiful new pair of 700 V2s to review. Last year, Kanye did pre-orders for the original Yeezy Boost 700 on yeezysupply.com, and I was one of the few people who actually went through and bought the sneaker because at the time, everyone thought it was really ugly, which I've gotta be honest, yes, it's ugly, but that's kind of the whole point. I got the sneaker in like three months later, started to rock it, and I fell in love. Like this is honestly one of my favorite Yeezys that have ever dropped. I think it's different, I think it's out there, it's stupid comfortable, it's a great shoe. And since last year, we've had a restock of this colorway and also a brand new colorway called the Moves, but the actual shape of the silhouette itself hadn't changed until all of a sudden Kanye started leaking images of the V2. And the images that we saw were of this sneaker right here, the Yeezy Boost 700 V2 in the static colorway. And then months went by and people started to question whether this sneaker was actually going to release. But now, today, December 29th, 2018, we finally have a release, but I think the sneaker is a little bit more limited than people expected. So without further ado, why don't we jump right into the sneaker itself. Here it is, the Adidas Yeezy Boost 700 V2 in the static colorway. So starting things off on the sneaker, the main difference between the V2 and the V1 one is pretty much just the upper. Even though the upper has been changed pretty dramatically from the V1, there are some overlays that are shared between both silhouettes. The first is this horn-shaped light gray suede panel on the toe. However, moving up from that panel, the similarities do seem to end because you've got this piece of 3M fuse overlay peeking out from underneath it. The base material on the upper underneath all the other overlays is this very thickly knit gray mesh. Continuing farther back on the shoe towards the laces, you've got this even shorter suede panel also in light gray. Even though these two panels look the same, they're actually two different types of suede. Not really sure why they did that. Maybe to save on cost, I'm not sure. Right at the base of the tongue, you've got another short suede panel with a 3M tag wrapping over the bottom lace. The laces on the Static 700s, like the Static 350s, come in gray with 3M woven all the way throughout, so if you hit this with a flash, it's really gonna pop out at you. Underneath the laces on the tongue, you've got more of that thick gray knit, and like the other 700, the tongue is actually left brandless. The laces themselves weave through eyelets on the short suede, and then near the top of the laces, you've got more of these 3M lace loops. This shoe is literally plastered in 3M. If you like 3M, this is a sneaker for you. Moving inside the sneaker, you've got this gray mesh sock liner, which is very well padded and makes the upper of the sneaker very, very comfortable. It does get a little warm though, but for the winter, that's great. The inside of the sneaker is rounded off with a gray ortholite insole with the ortholite Yeezy and Adidas branding in white. Unlike the previous 700, there isn't any Yeezy branding hidden on the sock liner of the sneaker. I'm not totally sure why that was omitted, but it's on the insole, so I guess that's enough. As for sizing, these guys fit me true to size, and that's what I recommend you guys going as well. For me, they fit just like the other 700 v1 so if you're wondering how these guys are gonna fit on foot and you can't find these in store maybe try on a pair of moves in a store because they seem to be sitting but if you don't have that opportunity you should be fine going true to size continuing back on the sneaker you've got this bright silver metallic 3m fuse overlay detail even though this pattern kind of looks like a linear arc you can see that there's actually an adidas three stripes logo hidden in the lines this 3m hit is the most eye-catching detail on the shoe and probably the biggest change between this sneaker and the v1s just beneath that detail we've got this cream leather panel that runs along the top of the midsole moving towards the back of the sneaker, you've got another cream leather panel that sort of forms the shape of a heel counter. And like the previous 700s, you've got these punched out dot details with 3M accents inside them. Moving around to the heel of the shoe, you've got some light gray suede with three more dot details. And then just below that, and also outlining the inside of these leather panels, you've got some 3M accents. Moving down on the sneaker, we get to this super chunky and sculpted midsole that's actually shared both on the V1 and on the V2. On the V2, however, it seems like they really sort of turned down the crazy and kept it a very subtle shade of white. I still really love 
love the sculpted accents on this shoe, even though there's no color to make them pop. I think these outlines really play off the upper very nicely. And then finally moving to the bottom of the sneaker, you've got this black rubber outsole with the herringbone traction pattern, an Adidas logo on the heel, and cut throughs to the boost. In my opinion, the 700 V2 in the static colorway is a really great refinement on the 700 silhouette. They kept the parts of the sneaker that worked, like the midsole and outsole tooling, and of course the full length boost midsole. And then they refined and upgraded the materials on the upper and made this feel like a premium sneaker. Maybe not a $300 sneaker, but a more premium sneaker. Of course, this sneaker is comfortable if you were wondering. It's not the most breathable, but it's got a very plush and soft upper. And even though I love the minimal and 3M accented upper, I would still love to see a version in the original Wave Runner colors because I think that would look really, really good on this sneaker. But that pretty much wraps up the review for today. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on the 700 V2 in the static colorway and whether you grabbed a pair for yourself or if you didn't, why not? So of course, make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe down below if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.